tennis is a movement-based sport. We spend a lot more time moving to and from the ball than we do actually hitting our shots, which means if you want to become a better tennis player, you need to do everything you can to improve the quality of your movement. My name is Richard Bryce, tennis hacker. I'm naturally a right-handed player, but unfortunately I injured myself in a mountain bike crash and now I'm having to relearn to play left-handed. My first goal is to become a 5.0 player and then after that I want to go on and compete on the seniors ITF tour. So I'm doing everything I can to become a better player and I make videos like this to give you ideas of things that you can work on to improve your game. One of the big things that I'm working on is improving my strength and my flexibility so that my court coverage is better. Now realistically my movement is already good enough to win at the 4-5 level but I don't just want to win at the 4-5 level I want to destroy 4-5s and then go on and compete at higher levels so I need to become stronger and more flexible so that I can get set up in better positions for my shots and really crush my opponent's soul so what I want to do in this video is show you some of the strength and flexibility work that I do to improve my game and then hopefully it'll give you some ideas of things that you can work on to incorporate in your own training hopefully you find the video helpful if you do give me that thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed to my channel before much appreciated if you could do that as well. To move well around a tennis court, you need to be strong, flexible, and well coordinated. I do a lot of coordination work at home, but here in this gym session, I'm focusing on strength and flexibility. Now there's no right or wrong way to do things. It's about understanding what your weaknesses are and what you need to improve to become a better player. For me, flexibility has always been my biggest limitation, but at the moment I'm working on improving flexibility and strength. Now I start my session with a little bit of a flexibility routine, rotating between working on my hip flexors, working on my hamstrings, and then working on my adductors. And as you can see, my adductors are one of the biggest areas of limitation for me. They've already improved a lot. I used to be even worse than this, but it's a process. But that's why I keep on working on my flexibility, because unless you've got good range of motion in your adductors and your hip flexors, it dramatically reduces how well you can move around core. The flexibility training isn't a passive process where I'm just lying in position and stretching. I'm doing a lot of contraction work in these positions, so I'm trying to get stronger. So when I'm doing my hip flexors, when I'm lying back, I'm really squeezing my glutes as hard as I can to try and encourage the hip flexors to relax, and then I'm kind of leaning forward to do a little bit of a strength exercise on the hip flexors. I'm also alternating that with squeezing my hamstrings, trying to bend my legs further, and then alternating that with pushing into the ground to try and strengthen my quads in these positions. And then when I go for the hamstring exercise, you can see I'm doing a combination here. So I start on the floor where I'm doing an active hip flexor strengthening exercise, trying to lift my legs off the floor. Then I go into working on a weighted hamstring exercise where I'm trying to gradually increase the range of motion and increase the weight that I can use. And the same thing for the adductors. I'm not just sitting there in this position, I'm really squeezing my glutes hard, trying to pull my knees as wide as they can go. Moving on to the strength portion of my workout, the main exercise that I'm focusing on is a trap bar deadlift where I'm also doing a calf raise at the end. I'm doing this to strengthen my glutes, strengthen my hamstrings, strengthen my quads, and obviously also the calves. So it's a very specific movement to improving speed in tennis. Now I start with a warm-up, just gradually increasing the weight. When I do the warm-ups, I'm not doing a high number of reps. I'm just doing maybe three or four reps, just trying to warm things up. I'm trying to get stronger so I don't want to create fatigue. After my warm-up sets, I then move on and do some contrast training. So I'm going to be doing the trap bar deadlifts, followed by some lower level plyometrics and vertical jumps to increase my power. But in addition to the work that I do in the gym to become faster, I do a lot of vision training. Now most players don't know about vision training, but it's something that a lot of professional tennis players do because it helps with so many different aspects of your game, including your speed. Because if you think about it, before you can move to the ball, you have to react and read where the ball's going. So by training your vision, it speeds up your reactions and it helps you get to the ball more quickly. To help you with that, I've actually created a free tennis vision starter program I'll place a link to the free program up there and I'll place a link to the free program in the description so that you can start working on it contrast training is a great way to increase your power and speed the idea is you're going to do a heavy strength exercise obviously I'm using the trap bar deadlift combined with the calf raise you do a low number of reps to really prime your nervous system and wake up the big muscles 
and then you have a very short rest, normally 10 to 15 seconds. I just take a few breaths in between, and then you go on to some kind of high-speed plyometric exercise. So I'm doing a low-level plyometric. I'm just doing some vertical jump, jumps where I drop down quickly and then try and explode up as high as I can. And it's a very similar movement pattern, the trap bar deadlift to the vertical jump. They're both very tennis-specific. The amount of leg bend that's going on is also very similar to the amount of leg bend that you need when you're accelerating around court and doing tennis specific movements. Now when you're doing contrast training, it's not a high number of reps, you're not trying to fatigue yourself, you're trying to develop strength. And because of that, you get lots of rest in between because you can't lift heavy continuously, you need to have long breaks. So I like to pair it with other exercises. So in addition to the contrast training, I'm also working on tibialis raises. So strengthening the muscle on the front of the shin, which is gonna be really important for protecting your ankles and reducing the risk of injuries. But after that, I've also got more time available, so I like to work on wrist flexibility. So in the wrist flexibility work, I'm doing a combination of things. I'm doing some long hold stretching where I'm just working on deep breathing to try and get things to relax, and then I'm doing some contraction work. So I'm doing some of the work contracting my finger flexors and my wrist flexors, so that I get strong in one position, and then I'm also contracting the extensor muscles in the fingers and the forearms to kind of strengthen the antagonistic muscle. And by combining the long hold stretching with the contraction work, it can help to increase your range of motion and really kind of bulletproof your wrists against injury. The number of sets that I work on really depends on how I'm feeling. Traditionally, I've had a lot of issues with my immune system due to concussions that I've sustained and some neurological autoimmunity that I'm dealing with. So although my goal is to get stronger, to get more flexible, to get better at tennis, you have to be sensible about these things. If you're not a professional athlete, you have to really look after your health as a primary thing. So that's what I have to do within my training. So I really gauge it on how I feel. Last week, I felt like I was battling a little bit of a cold. So this week I wasn't trying to do a large number of sets I was just trying to do four working sets building up to hopefully a total of 335 pounds on my final lift this was my second working set and there was a slight change in what I did obviously I did my tibialis anterior raises but I changed the wrist work that I was doing so after the previous set I worked on my wrist flexors this time I was working on my wrist extensors, but exactly the same process, kind of long hold work with breathing combined with contraction work for the agonist and antagonist. And if some of the things that I'm explaining don't make too much sense and you kind of want me to break down in more detail about agonist and antagonistic work and what those things mean, leave me a comment down below and ask any questions that you've got and I can make more detailed videos on some of the training techniques. The way I did my main lifts, I was just increasing it by 20 pounds each time so for my third lift I did 315 pounds and that felt pretty good the vertical jumps felt pretty good and then the rest of the circuit stayed the same and this was my final round of the contrast training I did 335 pounds for three reps followed by the vertical jumps and overall I was really happy with it because this is the most waste weight that I've lifted off the ground in a long time Unfortunately, during the pandemic and after COVID, I had a lot of neurological autoimmunity issues. So I dealt with a lot of constant pain for a couple of years and I wasn't able to do any lifting. So I lost a lot of strength. I'm now gradually getting back into it, slowly building my strength up. And my goal is to hopefully get to about 425 pounds. So it'd be four plates aside and a little bit over double my body weight, which should be kind of a good strength target to get to, and then I can start to focus on other things and other exercises. But at the moment, it's all progressing very steadily and it's feeling good. After the main contrast training, I then did a couple of additional exercises. So I did single leg step ups combined with some adductor isometrics. So really working on trying to improve my rather abysmal side splits. But again, it's something that's really important for me to work on. Now, with these additional sets, I don't always do them. It really depends on how I'm feeling in terms of my immune system. Today, I felt pretty good. So I added in a couple of additional rounds. Now, when I'm doing these box step ups, I'm working on power. I haven't got my heel down. I'm pushing through the ball of my foot. So pushing through the toe again to make it more tennis specific. And I was just doing eight reps 
her side. Again, really working on the power component and the speed component, not loading it in a really heavy way, just going for trying to get an increase in power. And then this is the side split variation, so I'm using a box to kind of give me a little bit of assistance, and then I'm alternating between kind of isometric holds, which is what I'm doing there. So when I'm leaning on the box, I'm kind of resting and doing more of a, a kind of a stretching component. So I do a little bit of contraction work through my glutes, and then after that, I then take my hands off the box and do contraction work with my inner thighs. And compared to a lot of people, this is really, really bad. Compared to how I used to be, it is a marked improvement. But this is one of the most important things that I need to improve. You see high-level tennis players, they're extremely flexible. That's how they can slide, that's how they can kind of stay low and get out to some of the wide balls. So obviously, that's the sort of stuff that I'm working towards you can only work with what you've got I wish I was more flexible I'm not but I'm just doing the best I can trying to improve as much as I can just a little bit every single time you practice and train so I did a few different rounds of that combination each time on the step up I was trying to maintain the speed and the power and then each time I did the side split I was trying to get a little bit wider each time and that was my training session so hopefully that's given you some ideas of things that you can incorporate in your own training ways that you can work on improving your movement if you've got any questions about any of it leave it down in the comments section and I'll get back to you as quick as I can hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did be awesome if you could give me a thumbs up and obviously if you haven't subscribed to my channel it's much appreciated if you could do that as well last thing I want to mention is that I have a coaching program where I teach players how to use brain-based training and other cutting-edge training techniques to become a better tennis athlete. It's not a program for beginners, it's for more experienced players. Most of the players that I work with have kind of achieved a certain level, they've plateaued, they're not able to get past it, but then by applying kind of more specific training, there's often things that we can do to really take them to the next level. So if you'd like to learn more about that, I've got a free class that's gonna teach you a little bit more about it. I'll place a link to that up, in the up there and down in the description as well. Okay, I'll catch you next time.